Well, the history of astronomy, we're now reaching kind of the close of where we're headed. Today, we're going to talk about modern astronomy. And we're kind of going to talk about this briefly because there's just so much there. And really, the book, as we learn through the book, as we talk through astronomy, we're going to be learning more and more about astronomy. In fact, the guy pictured on my shirt is the guy we're going to start with, Sir Isaac Newton, who kind of started the revolution of modern astronomy. And so we start the last podcast of chapter one. We are going to do some other stuff in kind of in between one and two, but we'll get there. So this is the last podcast of chapter one, and we're going to talk about modern astronomy. Now, when we start about our modern astronomy, actually, let me just talk to you about this cool background image. It's very cool. This is the Mount Palomar. I might be mispronouncing that uh, observatory in uh, in or actually the mountains of uh, California near San Diego, and uh, one of the largest observatories in the world. Basically, there's just a big telescope in this dome. The reason they have the dome there, first of all, this dome can rotate because as we know the sky sort of moves and you can kind of have the dome rotate and move around. And there's just basically just big honking telescope and this can obscure any extra light and there's a big mirror down here. We'll learn, we have a whole chapter on telescopes so we'll learn more about that as time goes on. But let's start um, with um, a guy by the name of Isaac Newton. The guy on my shirt that we just talked about, right? So what's up with Isaac Newton? Well, he was an amazing guy. He was, first of all, born, interestingly enough, the year that Galileo died. Okay, so he's born the year that Galileo died. And he was an English scientist um, who was known for the discoverer of gravity. You might have heard about the Newton and dropping the apple and all that kind of stuff. He invented calculus. How's that for cool? Um, he studied optics. He was able to uh, pass light through prisms and break up light and was, did a lot of work with optical stuff. And for many, they consider him to be the greatest scientist of all time. And he really uh, began the revolution. You know, why, why do the planets revolve around the sun, for example? You know, in our, our examples that we've talked about earlier, well, it has to do with gravity. And so the understanding of gravity led to so many things. When we finally understood what caused the motions in the heavens, so to speak, it all had to do with gravity. And Newton, right here, was the one who figured it out. Okay, an interesting couple other things. We meet a guy named William Herschel, like 1780, something like that. He discovered the planet Uranus in 1781. In fact, he had a big argument about what he should call it, what the name should be. He wanted to call it something like uh, St. George, after like the, the king at the time. And so Uranus is, as we now know, is kind of this blue planet. So he discovered it and uh, got the name, I guess. Uh, Uranus, the name came from some Greek uh, something god or something like that. All right. Now, Neptune was an interesting thing. Here's Neptune. You've heard of Neptune. But it was actually the first planet that was discovered by mathematical prediction. Nobody used a telescope and said, oh, there it is right there. That's ah, Neptune. No, that did not happen. What they did is actually they were back and they were looking at uh, Uranus. And when they looked at Uranus's, uh, it's, uh, that looks like I'm doing rings. So if I've got the sun and then I've got Uranus traveling around in our ellipse, as we talked about earlier, it turns out that it wouldn't kind of do some weird things. It would do some perpetations. And they saw, so somebody said, well, the scientists at the time, they said if there's some perpetations, some movement of it that's kind of weird, that's not following the laws, maybe there's another large object nearby, and that would be a planet. So Uranus's movement caused uh, perpetations, the, the unpredictable motion caused um, them to discover um, Neptune. So uh, due to the movement of Uranus that did not fit with the known laws of gravity. And so it screwed everything up. And they said, well, I think that if we, so here is Uranus. And you know, because it did this perpetation, if you look right over here, maybe, or something like that, and you look right there, you're going to see a new planet. And guess what? They look there with a nice, fine, powerful telescope when they discovered Neptune. I think it's pretty cool. Um, other things that have uh, become big in this whole world of uh, astronomy is just new technologies. And as during this time, basically the kind of the modern era, we've discovered better telescopes. This, of course, is an example of an amazing telescope. Um, photography, they could now take pictures of what they saw, and they'd have actual records of what was seen. Um, exposed film gave astronomers a better view. I don't know how pho photographic film works. Now everything's digital. But in those days, if you leave a photographic film out for a long period of time, it will get you more light. It captures more light. Because actually what photographic film does is it captures light. And if you can wait a longer time, you get like more light. And so they were able to do lots of amazing things with exposed film. We also were able to use different types of light. When you think of light, you think of what you can see. Um, like, you know, the colors Roy G. Biv. 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. But there's so many more colors. You can measure things in the X-ray spectrum, the infrared, the ultraviolet, things like that. All right, another couple of things that uh, changed things that, that really happened right around the, around 1900 is matter and heat. Okay, um, what is matter? Matter is like stuff. Okay, you're made of matter. I'm made of matter. The table's made of matter. Um, air is made of matter. That's stuff. Okay, and energy is something different, right? Like if it's heat, yeah. And so scientists really thought that matter and energy were the two things that were kind of existing in the universe, and they were totally different. Well, it turns out around 1900, a little after 1900, a guy by the name of uh, Albert Einstein came up with something called the theory of relativity. And I'm not going to go into the details of what that exactly means, but he was able to find that there is a connection connection between matter and energy. He has the most famous equation that he ever wrote, probably, was E equals MC squared. E stands for energy. M stands for mass. And C is the speed of light. All right, so energy is equal to the mass Energy, right? Energy, right? Energy. Matter is the mass times the speed of light squared. So they're related. And uh, we'll talk more about how that works. But that changed everything, too. Then we began to understand so much more about our universe as Einstein, and he wasn't the only guy, but a lot of people began to, to discover all that stuff. Now, speaking of energy, we do need to talk briefly about temperature real fast because this is going to come up in quite a bit of uh, examples here. There's something called the Kelvin temperature scale, named after this guy by the name of Lord Kelvin. So we've got this dude, Lord Kelvin. I forget his first name, but anyways, um, we've got this Kelvin temperature scale that's what's called the absolute temperature scale. Now, you're probably familiar with the Celsius temperature scale, where at zero degrees, water freezes, and 100 degree, water boils. Now, you can get colder and colder and colder, but when you get to the coldest possible temperature, you reach a point that's actually called absolute zero. Absolute zero is the coldest temperature that can possibly be reached, and that's minus 273 degrees Celsius. You can't go below that. There's no temperature below that. In fact, that's when uh, scientists would say that the atoms stop moving because temperature related is related to how fast molecules, atoms, whatever, move. And so they would stop at minus 273 degrees Celsius. But the Kelvin scale is what we call an absolute scale, meaning at zero Kelvin, that's absolute zero. And there's, maybe think of it this way, there are no negative numbers in the Kelvin system. And so at 50 Kelvin, that is not a negative sign, at 50 Kelvin we get liquid air. How's that for wild? Dry ice is solid um, right at about 195 Kelvin, and above it it's dry, it's, uh, it's a gas. Water freezes at 273 Kelvin, and it boils at 373 Kelvin. There's actually an equation that kind of relates these, and so let's write this down. We can say that the Kelvin, by the way, you don't say degrees Kelvin, you just say K. Kelvin is equal to 273 plus Celsius. All right. So, did I do that right? Hold on. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. So let's say that it's um, zero degrees Celsius outside. Well, we said K is equal to 273 plus C. Well, that would be equal to 273 uh, plus zero. So that would be 273 Kelvin. Well, that's okay. But let's say it's like a hot day outside. Now, a hot day outside in Celsius would be like 30 degrees Celsius. So if it's 30 degrees Celsius, what's its Kelvin temperature? Hmm. Well, you would just take 30 plus 273. So that would be 303 Kelvin. Now, let's go the reverse direction. Let's say that it's, um, it's uh, 50 Kelvin. <laughs> that would be very, very cold. What is the temperature in Celsius? Well, what you do is you take... Um, 50, now it's going to be weird, minus 273. Well, let me clear that up. Let's say 50 minus 273 right here. And so I've got my calculator on. Let me clear it here. And I'll just say 50 minus 273. Now, it's okay. I'm still going to get a negative number. That seems odd. Negative 223 degrees Celsius. So let's do one more and call it good here. Let's say that it's uh, 102. Let's say, no, let's say it's 400 Kelvin. What's that in degrees Celsius? Well, you would just take, what? You take the Kelvin, 400 minus 273. 
So on my calculator, 400 minus 273 gives me, that's 100 and 127 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be doing some conversions. It's just adding and subtracting 273. Very simple. You've got to keep track of which way goes what. But that's uh, kind of where um, modern astronomy got started. Um, and there's so much to add to this. That's kind of the point of the book. And so we're not going to get into great detail about the history of the modern astronomers because there's so much to get to, and we're not going to. That would take like an hour to make more than that to make those podcasts. So we're just going to get going on this, and we will see you in class or on the internet.